Hi, year 11. Uh, this is a brief introduction to the English Language and Literature A-Level course. Um, it takes you through what texts you'll study um, and some of the important um, ideas and skills that you will explore. Now, this shouldn't be anything different to what you have been told by your class teacher, what you might have heard at the open evening. But this is just a little refresher as you get closer to making those final decisions about what you're going to do. So before we look at the specifics of the course, I think this is a really lovely quote to consider um, because it's really apt for the course that we do. So if language is intimately related to being human, then when we study language, we are to a remarkable degree studying human nature. Now, what's lovely about this quote is that it really focuses on language. And although the course is called English Language and Literature, it's not like GCSE in that they are two separate things and you study them separately. The course is primarily a study of language and then you look at literary texts to help you understand language, but it is first and foremost about language. And when we study the different literary texts, what we're learning through language is things about human nature. When you're studying the poetry, if you do Caroline Duffy, you're exploring what it's like to uh, be a child, what it's like to uh, go through adolescence. When you are studying The Handmaid's Tale, you're exploring power and you're exploring conflicts and all these important aspects of human nature. So this is a really lovely quote to get you thinking about a course that focuses primarily on language. If that's something that interests you, then you are going to be doing the right A-level. So what I'm going to do then is take you through uh, what you will actually study in year 12. And it's been separated down into um, teacher A and teacher B. Now, the reason for that is <clears throat> just to help you see the differences between the two sides of the course. And hopefully to make you see that they aren't different at all. It's just two teachers teaching you kind of almost at random, really different things, but they aren't split into one doing literature and one doing language. And you can see that right from the beginning. In term 1A, called it 1A because it's not the whole of term 1, it is the majority of it though, both teachers will teach you the same thing. So we do an introductory unit on stylistics. And in a minute, I'll explain what stylistics is. And then you'll see that we branch off and we do different texts. So one teacher will do the Paris Anthology with you. The other teacher will be doing The Handmaid's Tale. And then we finish the year on poetry and The Great Gatsby Recreative Writing. Now you'll notice there isn't a term six here. That's because term six is usually taken up by doing uh, the year 12 mock exams and little bits of extra revision for that, um, which is why it's not on here. And then I'm not going to spend too long talking about year 13 because that's way, way off in the future. Um, but I'll just kind of outline it briefly here. Um, primarily to show you how much revision time there is in this course. Terms one and two, you'll be doing something new. You'll be doing a fellow with one teacher and you'll be doing your coursework with the other teacher. But then terms three, four and five are all dedicated to revision. So it's a really good course for managing to get everything completed quite early and giving you lots of time to perfect your skills. So on to year 12 then. That introductory unit that I talked about, introduction to stylistics, this is co-taught by both teachers. And the point is to really emphasize the importance of stylistics on both sides of the course. So what is stylistics? Well, it's a fancy word for combining linguistic and literary study. So combination of the study of language and the study of literary texts. And you'll hear that word stylistics uh, predominantly throughout the first couple of terms, but throughout the rest of the course as well. So what do we do? Well, in that unit, we go through and learn the, the new grammatical terminology that you'll need to know to be able to um, talk about the different texts that you explore. And in the bridging work, you will see that I've attached an advice document from some of our lovely year 12s. A couple of them talk about the overwhelming nature of the start of the course. And I think they're predominantly talking about this unit. Um, because it's a lot of new terminology altogether. Some of it you will know from GCSE, but it then drills down and usually gives you maybe three or four subdivisions of something you already knew. So, for example, you might be really confident. I know the difference between a verb and an adjective. And then we drill down and we say, actually, let's explore three different types of verb, two different types of adjective. 
And the key with this unit is just to bear in mind that it will be lots of new stuff all at once, and then you will practice it, practice it, practice it throughout the course, and it will feel second nature to you very quickly. And once we've done the introduction to stylistics, you will then move on with teacher A to study the Paris Anthology. So the Paris Anthology is a collection of different texts and they are all about, wait for it, Paris. So some examples of things that you might study, uh, that you will study in fact, blogs, we look at adverts, conversations, guidebooks, memoirs, to name a few, there are lots of others. And you're gonna be considering this really, how the genre of writing influences the language they use to communicate to their varied audiences. So how does language differ because one person is writing in the blog genre and somebody else is writing in the advert genre? And this is where the revision of genre audience and purpose from GCSE is gonna be a really helpful cornerstone for you. Uh, this is a really interesting anthology um, and really allows you to see language for what it is totally um, open for manipulation and change depending on who you are communicating with. So then you will uh, simultaneously be studying The Handmaid's Tale. So when you study The Handmaid's Tale, you explore the novel through the lens of the fantasy and dystopian genres. So this is where we kind of do something quite different to GCSE. So it's similar to GCSE in that you're exploring context and characters and themes and language and structure the way that you would have done when you studied Christmas Carol and Macbeth and Inspector Calls. Different to GCSE though, in that there is a much greater focus on the genre, so those fantasy and dystopian genres, and then you explore how those genre conventions are presented through the language. So some similarities, some differences to GCSE. And then terms four and five, towards the end of year 12, you'll move on to studying poetry, teacher A. So the poetry, there are um, a choice of four different poets to study. And usually what happens is the teacher will kind of explore them quite briefly with the class and then you will vote as a class on which poet you want to do. Uh, that might not happen, uh, but it has happened in the past. So the poetry is similar to GCSE and you explore the poet's ideas and how they use language to communicate their ideas, just as you did with the power and conflict poetry. However, it's different in three crucial ways, really. You don't have to compare the poems. It's open book, so you don't have to tediously memorise 50 million quotes. And there are no marks for context. So you might say it's actually a little bit easier than the GCSE in terms of what they expect you to do. Obviously, the ideas and the language are more complicated, which is what gives this unit its challenge. So year 12 um, in term four and five, you will then with teacher B study the Gatsby Recreative Writing. So this is a really exciting unit. It's usually one that um, students really look forward to and is very different to GCSE. So you study the Great Gatsby in order to learn about the writer's craft, you understand characters and the way they speak, and then you will rewrite sections of the novel or an extra scene from a different character's perspective. And then you can write a commentary on your own writing and you analyse what you did with your language choices. So similar to GCSE and you explore character and language like you did in literature, but it's different in that your creative writing is in a sense a bit more limited because you're told you're writing from this character's perspective and you're going to write this scene. Um, and it is predominantly to show your understanding of the language. When you do that commentary afterwards, you're showing that you understand language and you know how to manipulate it and change it depending on which perspective you're writing from. But it's a fantastic unit, always really enjoyed by students. And then I'm going to find, finish really briefly by talking about what your year 13 will look like. So with teacher A, you'll study a fellow. Um, the study of this is really similar to your study of Macbeth in year uh, 11. Um, it's just got extra layers of uh, complexity in terms of the language, but you study context the way you would have done, and you also study the meanings and the characters and things like that. And then with teacher B, you will be doing your non-examined assessment, your NEA. And uh, this is a, it's a fantastic bit of coursework because you are so open uh, to choice. You can do basically what you want. You're, you can choose two texts, anything you're interested in, and do a comparison of them. Um, it allows a lot of independence and students often really enjoy that. 
And then, like I said earlier, terms three, four, and the remainder of term five for your exam, we just revisit those key texts from year 12 uh, for you to revise. And that is what year 13 looks like. Um, it is a fantastic course, and I hope that this presentation has helped you to get an idea of whether you think it is for you.